Good day. The said television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast campaigning for candidates for the National Assembly of Western Armenia, Sons of Western Armenia, Samvel Karapetyan, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia, the impossible is the principle between life and death, Raymond Berberian, Ombudsman's report on the situation in Berdor to the Center International Organizations. During the days of European archaeology, the public got acquainted with the details of archaeology. Let's support Western Armenian television. The Election Commission of the National Assembly of Western Armenia invites you to participate in the 16th Zoom meeting scheduled for December 2023. The meeting will take place at 8 o'clock French time and 10 o'clock Yerevan time and will be conducted in Armenian, French and Turkish languages. The theme of the meeting will be Western Armenia and religion. Samvel Karapetyan was born on July 13, 1961, in the village of Berdakh of the Artesh region of the Turuberan world. In 1978, he graduated from Yerevan School No. 48, named after Misak Manushian. Since 1975, he has traveled around the territory of the Armenian SSR to study nature. Since 1978, he photographed, measured, and described Armenian monuments all over Western Armenia. During three decades, he researched and cataloged thousands of samples of architecture of Western Armenia. He studied Armenian monuments both within Armenia and abroad, author of numerous valuable books and works, including scientific researches, volumes of history of Armenia, separate books and periodicals. In his works, the famous expert on monuments has allocated a special place to the studies related with Artsakh, Northern Artsakh, Artsakh bridges, repairing the divan from 1997 to 2011, monuments of Armenian culture in the regions annexed by Soviet Azerbaijan, Marakavan and other works. In Armenia, for the purpose of fertility and productivity, frog-shaped jewelry was used, cufflinks, headbands, belts and earrings. Frog-shaped jewelry was mainly worn by new lads and pregnant women. Their diagonal pattern symbolized female fertility. Numerous small grains in combination with frog shapes indicated reproduction. In some villages of Arctic district, young girls and women wore bracelets with black breads for feet. When walking, they appeared casually, probably with the intention to strike evil forces. In the region of Hark, Vasburakan, women wore triangular and sickle necklaces with pandates. The triangle and crescent symbolized the feminine. There was a widespread cult in Armenia, which survived into Middle Ages and beyond, also considered a symbol of fertility. According to ethnographer Badoyan, the cult of the frog associated with the goddess Nar was later attributed to the goddess of love Astrik and the goddess of fertility and motherhood Anahid. A special group of ornaments are bewitched talismans which were used against harmful forces, the evil eye, as well as to treat various diseases, subjecting them first to incantation prayers and accompanying rites. Someone said, we have a state that must be supported, the rest is illusion. I took up these words and began to meditate. So I said to myself, we, the Armenians of the diaspora, will be, even if it paints us a kind of mirage, since nothing identifies our origin and ancestry, not even a simple identity document. Besides, if it were me, wouldn't I know which category of Armenian I belonged to, despite my family name and the feelings I have as the son of survivors from Western Armenia, I don't think that a passport from the Republic of Eastern Armenia would solve my problem as their so-called son, who has wandered the world for 108 years, nor that she, the Republic of Eastern Armenia, would openly celebrate my return as a lost ship. That's what we've got, my interlocutor repeated, and he stood up. To tell the truth, I took these words with great respect, turned them around, sifted through them, and ended up making sense of them because somehow the men deserved it, and yet, for me, the question didn't close. As as if it lacked a final touch for the idea to stop dangling on the tightrope. I had taken on his reasoning with a certain credulity because there was an unresolved dilemma for me, that of reclaiming our grandparents' inheritance, the one that escaped us and is now enjoyed by the Turks. This is what had been mobilizing and motivating my neurons for some time. 
We know that time doesn't run out and that the impossible doesn't exist, which might add to this dilemma that the ideas I'm throwing into the air today have been meticulously completed to my memory from other memories, other languages and latitudes, and if I express them, it's because although they seem implausible and wrapped up in personal fantasies, they are realities that have happened, are happening, and will happen sooner or late. Otherwise, I wouldn't have recorded them. As the resurrection of our martyrs with the children and grandchildren of deliberately sectioned nation must remember that being the rightful heirs to our millennia old lands gives us the right to claim what is ours within the framework of the legality granted to us by the current agreement signed in 1920 and postponed until today. The Turks occupied our ancestral lands but were unable to transfer them to their savage orders in Central Asia. Western Armenia is Hayastan. It was, it is, and it will be, and there is no doubt about it. Raymond Ruben Berberian Let's change history. We are all Western Armenia. The human rights defender Anahit Manasyan has published an extraordinary report on the humanitarian consequences of blocking the Berzor Corridor. The report is from the Human Rights Defender's Office. In her report, the Ombudsman highlighted instances of human rights violations, armenophobic statements, threats made by high-ranking officials in Baku, as well as the reaction of Azerbaijani society to the installation of the checkpoint. It was noted that the statements made by Azerbaijani officials after the blockade of the Berzor Road indicate that both the actions of the so-called eco-activists and the installation of the checkpoint are intended to deprive Artsakh of essential goods and services, thereby creating a humanitarian crisis that will force people to leave their homes. A report documenting the violations of the rights of Armenians in Artsakh will be sent to organizations and actors with an international mandate for the protection of human rights, as well as to the relevant governmental agencies. The government of Western Armenia once again refers to the state of Armenia that was established in 1920 by Boros Nubar. Its continuation is the Republic of Western Armenia, which includes the occupied territories of Artsakh as its province, where the rights of indigenous peoples are being violated. We would like to remind you that we closely monitor the developments and bring every issue to the attention of international structures in order to protect the interests of our people. During the 47th session of the Intergovernmental Committee on Intellectual Property and Genetic Resources, traditional knowledge and folklore held at the UN from June 5 to 9, the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, Armenak Abrahamian, discussed the violations of the lives and property of refugees from Shushi and their protection in the ECHR. A part of the European Archaeology Days in Armenia, various events took place from June 16 to 18 at various archaeological sites. Museum reserves and relevant organizations engaged in archaeological research. As Armen Press has learned from the message of the ERA Minister of Education, Science, Culture and Sports, during the three days of events, the public had the opportunity to familiarize themselves with all the details of archaeology, including visits to excavation sites, archaeological digs, reserve centers usually closed to the public meetings with archaeologists and resorts of archaeological finds, participation in numerous educational cognitive activities at the Museum of Armenian History, the results of the excavation at the ancient site of Verin Naver, carried out by Historical and Cultural Heritage Resort Center in the recent years, were presented with a new display of the finds. As part of the day's activities, an interactive conference entitled Perspectives of the Virtual Archaeology in Armenia was held at the Institute of Archaeology and Ethnography. The government of Western Armenia is open to the opportunity to recall at every opportunity that one of the cornerstones of autochthony, if not the most important, is culture. The state of Armenia is one of the few that does not lack evidence if its origin and millennia history. Wherever we dig in our homeland, we will find stamped proof of the Armenian genetic passport. Invaders come and go from the stage of history, and the natives remain the internal guardians of their territories and culture. As proof of what has happened, said, we would like to mention the temples of Aramas and Anahid that still exist and are scattered throughout Western Armenia, which are the guardians of our eternal spirit. Dear compatriots, the state television of Western Armenia has been operating of the online platform for many years. Here you can learn about the rich historical, cultural and political activities of Western Armenia. Our television does its best to make Armenians living in different parts of the world aware of the events taking place in our occupied homeland. Eastern Armenia, Artsakh, Javakh and also gives them the opportunity to get to know each other better and learn more about defending our rights in international courts. Your support can further improve the efficiency and quality 
quality of our television activities. Stay tuned and we will provide you with fresh and interesting information. Remember that we do not do self-promotion. Together we can do more. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. Thank you. 